this recording we're going to look at using ER Studio for modeling hierarchical structures. We're going to do this for Mongo and JSON. Before we start, let's summarize what is ER Studio. So it's an enterprise tool to allow data architects to design and document data assets. And we're going to use models of information to be able to do that. We support a wide range of products. Our history is standard relational databases, and we're doing a lot more with newer structures like Mongo and JSON. And our secondary mission is to be able to connect those models and those data architects in with data governance and data analytics initiatives. And overall, we want to form a company-wide data ecosystem. So wherever you go, you're going to get the same answers. All of these initiatives are going to pool their knowledge together. ER Studio itself has got two main components. There's Data Architect and Team Server. Data Architect is a thick client tool, runs under Windows, that allows you to create conceptual, logical, physical models, generate code, reverse engineer, etc. We've also got the Team Server component, which allows our data architects to pull their models together into the central repository. And then we've got Team Server Core, which is a web-based component that allows you to, to publish those models to a wider audience, and also to be able to build and connect models into a business glossary. So many of our customers have an overall objective to create an enterprise data architecture structure. So in this diagram here, we can see we've got three layers of the model. We've got a single enterprise conceptual data model at the top. We might have a small number, 10, 50, 100, whatever it is, um, important concepts for the organization. The second level, enterprise logical, then we've got a more detailed model. So those entities from the conceptual will be expanded into more detailed entities. Those entities themselves will then have attributes. Those attributes may then have keys assigned to them, will then have relationships between them. And the enterprise logical model will usually be in third normal form. So we've got one single model of our information across the organization. The third layer is then the project models. And for each data asset, we're going to produce a project model. Now, each project model may or may not have both a logical element to it and a physical element to it. We may then also include a business glossary. So we're going to expand this model out to connect to our data governance world. So the business glossary will have uh, lists of business terms that may or may not uh, be arranged into an ontology, have relationships between them. We're then going to connect those business terms across to our data models on the right-hand side. And that allows us then to govern our data. So we can assign rules to the business terms, credit rating score we have on the screen here. So we can say that, that is sensitive data, personally identifiable information, etc. And here are the rules that we apply to it. As we connect that business term to all of our models, then it allows us to say, well, where are we storing credit rating score? Are we following those rules? Likewise, we can go to any piece of information in any assets and say, what does this information mean and what are the rules applied to it? If we expand the model again, then down at the bottom, we've got project models that cover three sort of groups of data assets. The first is our application databases. Over on the right, the third one is our data warehouses. And in the middle, we've got our application messages, pieces of information that flow between our applications or are used within our applications. And all of these, we want to be able to model. We want to be able to model information in all of its forms. So let's look at the models in more detail. So when we're modeling information, we're generally going to use a logical data model. And in this, we're going to use entity relation diagrams. So we can see that we've got four entities here, publisher, book, chapter, and section. For each of those entities, we can define what are the attributes of it. So a book, we have a title and an author, a publisher name, a language, etc. We can work through each of the entities and then define how do we identify them. So a book is identified by its title and its author. If we're looking at a publisher, it'll be identified by its publisher name. We can then work through and create relationships between these entities. We can see there's a relationship from a publisher to a book. A publisher publishes a book. And if we're looking at the book, then we've got the primary key of the publisher propagated to the book. So we can see the identity of the publisher uh, that publishes that book. It allows us to join those entities together. Now, from book to chapter, we've got a different kind of relationship. This is an identifying relationship. So you can see that a book identifies the chapter within it. The chapter then identifies the section within that chapter. And in our model here, we're propagating the primary keys 
um, from the identifying objects. If we look at a section in isolation, then we can see to identify every section, we need to know the title of the book, the author of the book, the chapter number, and the section number. We can then use these models to create physical models of databases, and we've been doing this for many years. So if I want to create a standard relational database that contains information about books, then again, I'm going to have four tables. For each entity, I'll have a table. We'll replicate those sort of relationships, the primary keys, and create foreign key constraints between them. Now, for hierarchical models, things are a little bit different. We have different rules. Our models before will be very much normalized. Uh, within hierarchical structures, we might have a lot of denormalization where we're repeating information. So here in our JSON structure, we're going to contain a list of books and we're going to create arrays of book objects. And we can see for each book, we'll have fields containing information about the book. So here we can see our book contains a title and author, and then the chapter and the section are then hierarchical substructures within each book. We can model this in the same sort of way. So again, over on the left, we've got our traditional logical data model. On the right, we've got a physical model representing that book. Now in our JSON structure, we're gonna have one single top level entity that represents the array of objects, in this case, book. And we're then gonna take the other concepts or objects in the model, and we're gonna create those as substructures within our book. So for each book, we want to know the publisher. So we'll create a sub item for the publisher, with the publisher name, when was it found in the location, likewise with the chapter and the section. And an alternative visualization of this, we've got a single object in our JSON, which is a book which contains fields, and those fields can have subfields and so on. Mongo is fairly similar, it's built around JSON, so we have collections of JSON objects. Here we've got book, library, patron, publisher, and then we can link those collections together and each collection is, is just a collection of JSON documents as, as normal, um, each one having a surrogate key of underscore ID. So again, to look at the model of that, we've got two collections, publisher and book. Each of them has a primary key, a surrogate primary key, underscore ID, and then its fields. And those fields can then contain uh, substructures. And again, see a different visualization of this. We've got two top level collections, publisher and book, each have both got a surrogate ID and then some fields between them. And the big difference between JSON, plain JSON and, and Mongo is that we have both these IDs and then we can also create foreign key relationships between them. So our book is referencing its publisher as so a foreign key relationship based on that surrogate key. So let's see how we can build these models within ER Studio. So I'm going to take you through a demo of a, a number of stages here. So first of all, we're going to take a standard logical data model, and we're going to use that to create a physical model of a Mongo structure. So here's ER Studio Data Architect. We've got a very standard logical data model of our book with our library system. Here I've got books that contain chapters and sections published by a publisher, um, they then can be checked out to patrons within a library. And our publisher and our library, our patrons can have addresses. So very standard logical data model. Everything is provided with primary keys. Those primary keys have been propagated as foreign keys. When we create our hierarchical structure, and in this case, we're going to use Mongo, we need to make some decisions around containment, which entities are going to be contained within other entities. Now, some of them are very obvious. Here, we've got these identifying relationships from book to chapter and chapter to section. It's pretty obvious that a chapter uh, will be contained in a book and a section contained in a chapter. For other entities, things get a little bit more complicated. For our checkout, we might want to make a decision. Do we want to put our checkout inside just our book? Um, or do we want it to exist as a substructure within our patron or even our library? Or all three. So very commonly within Mongo and JSON, denormalization is important we want to improve our performance. So it might repeat uh, objects. The address, for instance, is a good example of that. So we might want to place the same address uh, within our publisher, our library, and our patron. So first decision is uh, on the containment. Now, what we've done is we've added in a new property against our relationships, and you can specify, is this relationship a containing relationship? And if it is, what is the direction of containment? So in this case, pretty straightforward, the parent will be the container, book will contain our child entity of chapter. 
Now, for some other relationships, we want to make them containment, but we might want to change the direction. So our standard relationship here in the logical is that the address is the parent entity in the relationship. So we're storing the primary key, the address, against our publisher as a foreign key. In this case, we want to reverse the containment. So we want to be able to store uh, within the publisher the address. So we're going to reverse the direction by unchecking parent is container. So we're going to go through our model like this. We can also display these on the diagram to make it a little bit easier to understand. So the next step is to generate our physical model. It's a usual sort of practice from the logical generate physical. So I can go and select Mongo. And then I've got some options. So here we've got some options that allow us to define all these entities, which ones are going to become top level collections and which ones are going to be nested objects, substructures in the, the hierarchies of those collections. Now we've got options to say convert everything to a collection, everything to a nested object. But we're going to use this new rules based approach. I'll explain how this works in a moment. We can also decide on how we handle any foreign key properties that have been propagated in, in the logical model. Uh, do we want to delete them or make them native? Sometimes it's useful to retain those foreign key properties. So if I hit finish, then it creates this um, pseudo hierarchical structure. So again, we're using these little lines here uh, to show that there is a containment relationship there. Uh, these dashed lines here showing that there's a Mongo referencing relationship. So the process that it goes through is, first of all, creates uh, an object for each entity, and then looks at all the lines for the objects and then creates the lines according to the rules. If it's a containment line, then it creates a containing relationship. You can see here between chapter and section and book. Once it's created all the lines, it then looks at each object and looks at the lines and says, am I contained in any other object? If I am, then I must be a nested object. So section and chapter are both contained. Checkout is contained within book, but book is not contained within anything. Likewise with publisher, library, and patron. So it makes those top level collection objects. Based on that initial automatic behavior, we could then change that. Where it sets the object to be a collection, then it puts in the, the surrogate primary key, the underscore ID field. I can change this model now. If I'm not happy with the rules that the tool has applied, then I can go through and select an object and switch the class and change it from nested objects to collection. And if I do that, then it'll take away the surrogate key or apply the surrogate key, and it'll look at the lines and try and change those as best as it can based on the rules. Or I could go back to the logical model and change the logical model and use compare merge to propagate those changes. And it should update the model accordingly. The next thing we've introduced is a different way of visualizing the model. So here we're looking at the um, pseudo hierarchical model. And if I select diagram objects and set rolled up contained objects, it now gives us a view that is very much more like the Mongo structure. We can only see the collections and all of the nested structures are shown as a hierarchy within it. We can expand or contract these structures. Now I've just generated the model again, and I've introduced an error into the model. Now EL Studio is telling us that this line here is invalid. So the logical, I didn't set that containment relationship. And if I open up the relationship, um, what we're trying to do here is create a Mongo referencing relationship from the address to the library. So the address is the uh, is the parent entity. So what this would try and do if I actually drew this in the model would be try and propagate the primary key of address to library. Now address being a nested object it doesn't have that surrogate primary key, that underscore ID property. So it's not valid, I can't do this in, in Mongo. So the little ghostbuster is telling me that the line is invalid. I've got two options here. I can either delete the line and recreate it maybe as a containing relationship or I can go back to the logical and this is the standard way of, of working with ER Studio. We make all changes in the logical, and then we're going to use compare merge to propagate those changes back to the physical. And that's what we're going to do here. So if I run compare merge against my physical model, it's telling me that the only difference between these two models is the relationship here, saying that in the logical it's containing, and in the physical it's not containing. And as usual, I can merge all those changes to the target, and hey presto, it's now changed that line to be a containment line, which is valid. The Ghostbuster symbol's gone. 
Now we've done a lot of work with our in-place edit of models. So a lot of our customers are saying, well, uh, as well as being able to generate physical models from the logical, we also want to be able to create them directly into the logical, just rough something out. And then maybe use compare merge, then generate logical from it later on. So going back to our rolled up view here, we've added in some nice new features for editing the physical model. So if I shift click on a, on a field, I can add in new fields. So if we add in country, immediately specify uh, the data type of that. So I can do everything through the keyboard. Now notice as I've edited um, the address object here within library, it's also edited the reused address in my other structure. So again, I might be using a denormalized approach, um, but I'm trying to encourage that standardization by reusing the, uh, the object. We've also added in some nice features to be able to better promote or demote fields between objects. So using the tab key, I can promote car park size to be a field of library or move it to be a field of the address. I can also do the same thing for a JSON model. So again, starting from my standard logical model with my additional markup for containment, I can generate a JSON structure. In my model, we're retaining the referencing relationships. We can leave these as documentation lines. And here it's created four top level objects. Now I might want to make some decisions and say, okay, I really only want one top level objects. If I was to generate JSON for this right now, it would put a wrapper around the, the four objects. I've got options here. I can either go back to the logical as we did with the Mongo model and change our containment relationships, or I can modify the model directly again. So using my containment line, I can specify that the library has patrons I can specify that the book has a publisher and that a library contains books. And there's my JSON structure. At any point, I can open up the objects and see the fields within it. Um, we've got some new capabilities to be able to switch between those objects nice and easily. I can also see the JSON structure within my sample field here. And not only can we see the JSON instance version, we can switch and say, show me the JSON schema for this particular object. And we're supporting draft 07 and draft 2020. So here's the draft 07 uh, schema version of our library object. And then as usual, I can go from the JSON and generate database. And again, um, same sort of mechanism, say, give me the JSON schema as a file. Now, like we can for SQL models, we can also import code and reverse engineer the model. So here I've got a JSON structure uh, representing my book with some chapters and sections. Now I can go to ER Studio and import this model. Now once I've selected that this is JSON, it will determine automatically whether it's an instance file or a schema file and then it will reverse engineer the file and create a model for me. So here's our JSON structure we're just looking at. We've got a book object that contains chapters and sections, and there's all the fields. Now, as usual, when we reverse engineer a physical model, it will also automatically create for us a logical model from it. And here is that uh, logical model. In the scenario here, we want to take data from a JSON model, a hierarchical model, and we want to load it into a SQL Server database. So we need to be able to design that SQL Server database. As usual with ER Studio, we can, from a physical model, create the logical, and then from the logical, create a new physical model from it. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, the first thing we need to do, if we want to create a database, then we need to get it to third normal form. First job is to provide some keys for each of our entities. So I can open up each of the entities and go through and decide on the keys. So for a book, how do we identify a book? It's going to be the author and it's going to be the name or title of the book. Now automatically the tool has propagated the foreign keys through the model. I can then go to chapter and say, well, how do I identify a chapter? So we've got our foreign keys of author and name. That's great. But we also identify by the chapter number and likewise for section. Once we're happy that the, the model is then normalized, I can then generate any physical model for any database. So here, Microsoft SQL Server 2019, and generate the model. 
So now from this, I've got a physical model, and I can then go on and then generate my SQL file, create the database directly, and here is my SQL code that then creates the SQL Server database from our book model. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was how do we connect our Mongo and JSON models into a data governance program. So going back to this slide here, we can see that we've got our, our project models representing our application databases, our JSON messages, our Mongo structures, and the data warehouse. Now, we can link both of these either into the enterprise logical model and or across to, to our business terms and our business glossary. So we could potentially relate every physical field in every object in our, our models of our data assets directly to business terms. Uh, we can link them via the project level logical model or via the enterprise logical data model and link all the way up. Um, so I'm going to show you in the tool how we can connect directly to business terms. I think we've already seen how we can take a fragment of the enterprise logical model and then use that to generate our uh, JSON messages or our Mongo structures. So we'll link to the business terms. Let's look at that. Okay, so here we are in Data Architects with our book example again. And very simple. I can open up an object. This classification process, we really want... Uh, the people that totally understand the data asset to be able to make that mapping to the business terms. We don't want to rely on our data stewards to, to, to have to go and find out about the objects. So against each object in my model, I've got a glossary tab and the same for each field. Um, I hit add term and it gives me a list of all of the business terms in the, uh, the business glossary that have the name of the object or the field in its name. And obviously we can change this search term. So here we can see in our business glossary, I've got four terms containing book, book in library, um, net book value in accounting, open book uh, management. Yep, it's gonna be book in library. So I attach it to the term, hit apply, and now it's mapped. And I have to do this on uh, objects that are checked into to the repository. So to summarize, with ER Studio 19.2, we can rapidly document and design Mongo and JSON structures, those hierarchical structures. We can start from a standard logical data model, faithfully representing the information, and convert that to a hierarchical structure, and then generate code from it. Likewise, we can reverse engineer uh, the JSON in a Mongo, or a, or a plain JSON structure, or even a JSON schema create a physical model of it, and that physical model then automatically generates a logical relational model from it, which we can then use to document it. Standardization is really important in data management. So we want to be reusing concepts, standard concepts. When we're talking about a client, then we've got a standard set of fields for that client. We understand how to identify that client. We understand what all of those pieces of information mean. So reusing either an enterprise logical data model or smaller project level logical data models gives us that standardization and that reuse. We can connect our models into our data governance program, uh, either via the enterprise logical model or directly to business terms. Okay, I hope that was uh, useful. Thanks for watching. Um, if you want to speak to us more about this, then contact us at sales.idera.com.